Welcome again. Today we consider topic 5, pollution management, looking specifically at 5.1.1, define the term pollution. 5.1.2, distinguish between the terms point source pollution and non-point source pollution and outline the challenges they present for management. And 5.1.3 state the major sources of pollutants. Pollution is defined in the ESS guide as the addition to an environment of a substance or an agent such as heat by human activity at a rate greater than that at which it can be rendered harmless by the environment and which has an appreciable effect on the organisms within it. The generation of man-made waste does not necessarily constitute pollution of the environment. Let's consider a simple analogy. The water from this faucet is able to drain out and not build up. If it does build up, then this, if it were a pollutant or a harmful substance, would constitute pollution. Whereas, if it does not build up, even though the flowing water represents a harmful substance, the fact that it can be removed from the system without causing any harm or buildup means that you would not classify it as pollution. No pollution, system removes the harmful substance system is unable to remove the harmful substance, it collects and affects the environment, then we have pollution. When pollution results from a single, localized, easy to identify site, like this, outfall pipe here for domestic wastewater that's flowing onto this beach. This is an example of a point source. Such sources of pollution are much easier to manage because they are easy to identify. The end of pipe treatment is easy to apply. In the case of automobile emissions, however, it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly where the oxides of nitrogen and the hydrocarbons come from as they collect in the city air, creating a nauseous smog. This is an example of non-point source pollution. This type of pollution is much more difficult to control given the fact that there are multiple sources. Some typical sources of these harmful agents or possible pollutants are the fossil fuels, the source of energy that has driven development in the 20th century. Oil, gas, and coal. Here we see excess gas being flared, a common engineering practice in cases where natural gas is used to generate electricity and to power industry. And then, of course, there is domestic waste, which includes 
waste from our food, including bones and vegetables, a range of materials, including packaging and metals of all kinds, plastic and paper. Domestic waste water. Industrial waste, another notorious pollutant, for it includes persistent organic materials like PCBs and dioxins, materials which are bound to be pollutants because it is virtually impossible for natural agents within the environment to degrade them. So no matter what, they will ultimately end up in the food chain once they are not cleansed from the environment. Agricultural systems, while they may not necessarily contribute to pollution as defined, Many systems do pollute because of the scale of production. Here in the Central American nation of Costa Rica, these pineapple plantations grow on the thin rainforest soil as pesticides and fertilizers run off. It is necessary to use an array of fertilizers since the natural soil is typically very poor, a characteristic of the rainforest. Which is known for its thin soil, which is only protected by its rich canopy and network of roots from large trees. When such soil is cleared for agriculture, however, there is the need to apply a cocktail of fertilizers to ensure efficient yield. This excess fertilizer presents a serious threat to aquatic ecosystems. Animal waste from chicken farms and pig farms and cattle farms present similar threats to aquatic ecosystems as the nutrient-rich fecal matter drains into the waterway. If the world population were 2 billion, there would be very little pollution. Let's discuss this statement using the definition of pollution provided in this lesson.